I think this is really, really important. Um, and it's, because uh, uh, I want to cover two things today. Um, but let me introduce myself first. I'm uh, Scott Roselle. I'm a professor at Stanford. Uh, I work on China since way before anybody here was born. <laughs> I probably learned Chinese before your parents were born. You know? I actually just came from Taiwan. If I get tired, um, the, the last 10 days I've flown into Beijing, my flight was supposed, uh, from Hong Kong uh, two weeks, uh, 10 days ago, it was supposed to arrive at 11. Last night it was supposed to arrive at 10, and then uh, four days ago it was supposed to arrive at midnight from Xi'an. And every single flight I got to my house in Yayunchun, and it was light. It was light. So I got in the house this morning at 6 a.m. But I was from, came from Taiwan, and I love Taiwan. That's where I learned Chinese. And, and uh, I mean, I tell you one thing. If somebody wants to learn about good economic development, go to Taiwan. I mean, uh, it's, there's so many lessons to learn from Taiwan. I think that, um, I mean, you know, they, they don't, it's not that they don't have problems, but uh, uh, ha, just Taiwan's a, I like Taiwan, you know. It's, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's interesting, I mean, it's very interesting. There's, um, like I said, lots of problems there, but uh, uh, they have a very good base. Um, uh, and so I work on poverty. I've been working on poverty, you know, for, for 25 years since my dissertation. And I started out as his student at Cornell. <laughs> uh, and, but I was in agricultural economics. And you know, 30 years ago, agriculture, uh, poverty was agriculture, right? Uh, China had uh, 400 million people in poverty. And one year at a time, Mutan, China came up. People switched crops. They got to the market. Uh, they put more fertilizer on. They invested in water, and and you know, 400 million people inched up towards poverty line. And then they went above poverty line. And China had like Sai Yi, you know, like 300 million people got moved to poverty. You know, one you know, one gongjing, one kg at a time. Um, it's true. I mean, that's basically how China solved poverty. It's, it's, a, it's a great story. Um, and and uh, that's, I worked on a lot of those issues around that. And then all of a sudden, in early 2000s, you know, I started noticing that China changed. <laughs> and, and, and I remember real, real soon, this was in 2003, I was doing, we were doing some surveys. And we had a, you know, Jia Ting Shou right? And dad and mom stayed at home. And uh, they were, you know, Zhong Zhong Di, right? And then you get all their income from a whole year, and you add it all up. And then over here, the Diao Cha Erzi Da Wai Mei Chu Da Gong, right? You know, this is stupid son, Shi Si Sui Tuo Shi. He he dropped out of junior high, and he went out and worked in a factory. This was 2002, uh, three already. And you discovered that in, in, in eight weeks, he made more money than mom and dad together, right? And, and, then, and then I started thinking, wow, great poverty alleviation, right? Is you don't need agriculture anymore, right? Uh, you need agriculture for true wonder, right? Uh, <laughs> for national food security. And believe me, China takes national food security very, very serious. They look at Taiwan and Nan Chaoxian and Japan and laugh at them because you know they depend on world food markets for 60, 70 percent of their food. Right? Um, <coughs> China is going to be self-sufficient, so it's, it, agriculture is important, but it's not poverty anymore. And so then it was just, well, how do you get these kids into a job? But then all of a sudden it was like this stupid kid is, you know, um, yeah, he can solve his parents' poverty now by by dropping out of junior high and going and getting a job, and the family's out of poverty immediately. You know, six weeks, they're out of poverty. But I was thinking, what's that kid going to do? You know, he's now, you know, he's now 20 years old. In Erling Sunny, he's going to be 33 years old in 2030. 
and he can't read, he can't, or he can read a little, he can write a little, he doesn't know math, he doesn't know computers, he's, you know, what's he gonna do? And, and, and then we started looking at it, and China's, China's um, stock of human capital, Renni Zuban, the Tai Chan, the Chu Bei, the Tai Chi Lei Chi Lai, the Tai Chan, the human stock of human capital, is by far the lowest of any country in the world that's middle income. It's lower than Brazil, it's lower than Chile, it's lower than Mexico. I mean, these countries are a mess. And, and China's human capital, it's like all of Lao Dun Li, just all of it together, only 11% have college degrees. And then the, the government says, Tai Bo Da Xue Zheng. We have too many college kids. Only 11% of the labor force has a college degree. If you want to be a high income country in 20 years from now, you have to have 40%. That means every single person in China needs to go to college, just like Taiwan, just like Nan Chaoxing, and they've continued to grow, right? You know, not like Japan that said in Ijo Chiuni, they said, and Japan blocked, they stopped expanding university in the 70s. And now only 30% of Japanese are go to college. And people think that Japan, Urshin and Mei Meijang, one real important reason is the, the, the human capital stock in Japan is too low. Right? And, and so I said, well, wait a minute, do I want them to solve poverty today? Or do we want to solve poverty and development issues tomorrow? So I started reading books, you know, and then reading ch Chinese education. And Chinese educators say, we need to, we need Zhiyue Gaozhong, we need vocational ed because our factories have not enough skilled labor. And then you read the educational theorists and say, education's not for today. You don't educate for your economy. Edu education is not a policy tool for economic growth today. But Xi Jinping just made a big announcement and said the most important thing of economic growth in Shi Wu Shi San Yan Ji Hua is our education. We need to change our education policy to help grow. That's exactly wrong. Education is for 20 years from now. Right? And so, wow, it's like, and of course these poor, poor parents, you know, they don't think education is for 20 years from now, right? They think education is for solving poverty today or lack of education, right? And so that's where I got interested in, in, in really human capital and, uh, and I sort of completely switched my entire research agenda. And then, you know, those guys in MIT and, uh, uh, Harvard and Yale and uh, in economic development started doing, you know, uh, large scale randomized control trials by Da Shokli the Shuyin, and I thought it was kind of cool. Everybody, everybody thought it was cool then, right? And and by the time I went um, about 2004, 2005, I was trying to figure out how to study this stuff. Um, you know, you went to Poverty Action Lab at MIT. You look at their website, and they had like. Already in 2006, they had like, wow, there's a Qi Bai Pian Wen Zhang, Do Shi Yong Sui Ji Ga Yu, right? To, to about 700 randomized control trials. And then it was really cool, you say, by topic, into education, and microfinance, and health, right? And then you could say by person, right? And Esther DeFlo, and Michael Kramer, and you know, Albert Park. Because, <laughs> 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 Albert, had, Albert and Paul Bobby had one paper on China, one Sui Chi Gan Yu on China, that they still haven't published. They still haven't published that paper. And that's the only paper on China, uh, a randomized control trial, that's, that was on there. And still, to today, there's zero on there, I mean, uh, published. So, and I said, why is it? And it seems like it, this is exactly what we want to do. Because Zhongguo Zhangfu Yu Qian, the government had money, uh, and the government is really corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> but every government's corrupt. In fact, but the interesting about China's government is China's government 
you know, is if you do something good, at least Xi Jinping Zhu Qian, at least before, if, if you did something good, you could move up and get promoted, right? And and there's a lot of very smart people. Is is you find in China's government that people are much much smarter and higher educated, and and so you know if you could tell these guys what would work and what wouldn't work, they had money, they could do stuff, right? Um, and uh, so that's why I sort of got interested in human capital and and uh, uh, using sort of large scale randomized control trial and non randomized control trial, other program evaluations. Um, so I'm going to talk today about those two things. I'm going to talk about inequality, but not income. Inequality. I'm going to talk about inequality in 2030, early Sunday of inequality. Zhao Zhong talked about uh, inequality today, right? Mm -hmm. Did he? What did, what did Zhao Zhong talk about? Huh? Yeah, yeah, so the inequality technique, yes. Um, I'm going to talk about inequality, which, which is really about human capital inequality. Right? So that's, I'm going to talk about education inequality and health inequality, nutrition inequality. I want, to, I want to put the baseline, and then I want to say, what can we do about it? You know, how can we use program evaluation or randomized controlled trials? And I'm going to just do randomized controlled trials, and Mintian Jeffrey Smith is going to do program evaluation in general. So he'll do much, he'll do more general. I'm going to do a special case of when we randomize. So that's sort of our, our, um, let's put the work. Okay. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, oh, here we go. So, okay. A, uh, yeah, uh, does, does this work better? Good. Uh, so, um, so that's, Let's, uh, this two or this one second. Okay, um, I want to do one thing first. I want to show you my, the final part of my introduction. <laughs> and I run a group called, I run a group called REAP, or Rural Education Action Project. And we're, we're based at Stanford, and we have many colleagues in school of medicine, education, engineering, and we work with Zhong uh, Keiyuan, with, uh, oops, I'll figure this out. And, and we have collaborated, it's really, it's, it's just a, a, a collaboration uh, where we have uh, collaborators in every sort of province. We work mostly in poor rural areas and in migrant communities um, uh, around big cities. Um, and what we do, I, I sort of already said a little bit, is I want to understand the barrier of keeping rural poor from closing the education gap, nutrition gap. Um, and one thing, we do projects where we design and implement interventions, ganyu, sui ji ganyu, and then we conduct one of the pingu zizi. It's kind of cheating. <laughs> you can always come up with the right answer. No. <laughs> uh, what we really like to do is we like to work with NGOs, foundations. Uh, we really like to work with government agencies where we tell them, how do you, how do you roll this? How do you design this project? So for Guopei, for, for, for example, for uh, uh, China's government spends about uh, 4 billion US dollars. A billion they yuan every year on patient lecture, and guess what? No one knows if it works. Never, never been evaluated. And, and guess what? If you ask anyone, they say, "I don't think it works." <laughs> Everybody thinks it's total fail. But every year the government increases, you know, because teaching is important. Women must spend money on uh, training teachers, right? But everybody thinks they, they don't work. I mean, I, I'm actually very neutral. And so, of course, what they do, you know how China does it. It's like, you know, Zhao Yuting has a program for uh, elementary school uh, uh, math uh, pedagogy, right, in math for elementary school. So they say, oh, we have 100 Jirbiao, we have 100 positions. And so they go to 50 Zhao Yuju and say, send us two teachers each, right? And we don't know, are these the best teachers or the worst teachers? 
You know, are they teachers who need training? Or are they teachers who are all stars? And and then we no one knows because then this Jiao Yu Ju then says, uh, my favorite place you win the Xiao Jiang, right? Send me a teacher or what Zui Hun the Xiao Jiang, right? Send me a teacher. You you don't know what and then and then a hundred people show up, and then you know two weeks, you know they teach they teach and then they go back home and that's done, right? It's and then the Chinese government goes right. So what we do is we're now working with Henan. And Shanxi governments, and instead of choosing Yibai for this year and next year, choose 100. What they're doing is this year they're going to choose 200. Okay, and the 200 are for this year and next year. And of course, what we're going to do is then we're going to randomly choose 100, right? And those guys get trained this year, and then the other 100 get trained next year. And what we're going to do is we're going to buy a dish of Haitian. And we're going to go to Zhou Yi Ha. We're going to go to all Liang Bai the Shlao the the classes, and we're going to give their students a test, and and before they can teach them anything, and then and then we're going to go and we're going to go in, in December, and then we're going to go in June, and we're going to see do their to the kids to the kids of the teachers who got trained. So that's what I'm saying is we help them this new design. And then they do it. I mean, we're not gonna, you know, all the way patient option. I don't know anything about, you know, shu uh, shu the kuchang. But, but I mean, maybe we're gonna find that the kuchang should pushy, right? Then what we'll do is maybe we'll go to Bei Shida, and maybe we'll go to my colleagues, and, and they'll find some things. And then and then and then, and then we evaluate, right? And so we call it sort of action research. Um, and we have three programs, four programs. These are almost the same. Uh, health, nutrition, so investing in health and nutrition for education. Uh, keeping kids in cool, this is, how do you keep, you know, as you're gonna see, it's, you know, it's in the back, there's 三十左右的中学生初学, I mean, they don't finish 初中, they don't even finish junior high. How do you keep them in school? No one wants to go to Jiria Baoju, you know. Uh, uh, I, uh, we're writing a paper now called Shriya Baojong Shi Qingnian the Torso. It's the, the num torso, the, the daycare. It's a daycare for teenagers. The number one reason, if you need to tell me about Sunday and Jesus, and you ask them, why are you in school? The number one reason is my parents make me. Right? That's the number one reason they'll tell you. This is, you know, hundred this is two hundred and fifty schools in in Zhejiang, Henan, and Shanxi. So that's the number one, you know, the only reason there is mama, baba, you know, make me go, right? And uh, uh, then we have one technology, we're in, you know, Stanford's <coughs> in Weibo, in, in, in Silicon Valley, so we have lots of companies that give us money to, to do this. And, so. and then we have this new program called Teaching. So, uh, and that these are all over, you can see they're mostly in, Xibei and Xinan, there's a few around big cities. Uh, there's our health nutrition, part. and every one of those is a, law, is a randomized controlled trial that we've done in, in, in schools or villages or hospitals um, and keeping kids in school. Uh, you know, you can see keeping kids in school. This is a Zhongbu, I mean, it's Henan, Anhui, Jiangxi, it's the worst there. Of course, their parents are all working in the cities, right? And so, um, and then uh, we have technology and human capital. So, so, uh, so that's what that's kind of what we do. Yeah, so, so that's what I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and let me share a minute. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I, I started here. This is the two things we're going to say is. <laughs> Is China's human capital inequality high? Is it, and, and, uh, and then how do we solve some of these problems? Those are the two things we're gonna do. Um, and the real question, the real question I wanna answer is, uh, <coughs> what will China's inequality be like in 2030? Uh, I hope, you hope, <laughs> Lawrence hopes, he lives in Ithaca, but he hopes that China will become a high income country by, 2030, 2040. It'll be a monitor. It'll be great for the world. <laughs> It'll be great for 
economic growth, it'll be great for one billion Chinese, and it'll be great for um, uh, stability <laughs> of the world, right? of East Asia, right? Let me tell you, today, I, I went to Japan a month ago, South Korea two weeks ago, Taiwan yesterday, everyone is scared to death <laughs> of the next 15 years. They say, everybody says, there'll be a war in the next 15 years. I mean, I just hear that. I go, wow. I just, so, um, but we all hope that China's going to develop and become a high income, stable country. So, okay. So if you want to do that, what role does inequality play? Well, let's go look at, um, I, I want to ask, from World War II, 70 years until now, how many countries have gone from Zhongdong Shoru to Gaodong Shoru? How many countries? Uh, 5, 10, 20, 30, or 40? 13. 13. Somebody told you that? Yeah. Very good. Uh, just good, exactly. 13, right? Okay. Um, What's China's genie now? 50. 47. Right? Uh, <laughs> Yu Xie is 53. Right? Gan Li says 60. Right? Uh, some Fudan guys say 54 or 52. Right? I, I always forget with. In fact, it's, it's 50. Right? Okay. Of those 13 countries that went from middle income to high income, what was their average genie? 31. Sanjuri, what was the highest genie? Israel was 39. But after Israel, it was Ireland with 34. So the highest country. Now, what? how many countries have got the middle income, grown, and then stopped? Or fallen? Like Brazil in Brazil were very fast, and in the 19, the end of the 60s, it collapsed. Right? Argentina was the fourth richest country in the world. It got up and it collapsed. They have good jucho. They have really good <laughs> football teams. They, they have not had a good development record after. Okay, there's been about 17 countries that have grown from middle income and either stagnated or collapsed. What's their genie? 44 of those countries that grew and stagnated or collapsed no none of those countries had a genie under 40 <laughs> all of them are so now there, there's no causality I mean I can't tell you anything about causality I'm just telling you facts so there's nothing and now China's trying to do this with a genie of 53 now it's a new world, right? It's Guo Ji Hua, right? The Dian Zi Qi Hua, right? And, and, and it's all kinds of new things in the world. And so maybe this old paradigm doesn't hold. But I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. And then I say, okay, Scott, what, are, what if you're right? What happens if every country collapses if they have, or stagnates if they have a very high genie? Um, no, you can't say it's for sure. But what about? What about a probability? What's the probability that might happen? 20%? Maybe. Zhongguo yu mei ban fa I mean, China has, you know, China knows how to, you know, we, we've, we've said four times in the past 30 years that China is going to stop. And they can't. <laughs> right? You can't. The SOE is, is in some. The bank crisis of the, of the 2000s, right? Uh, the fiscal crisis of the mid 90s. It's going to. And then China solved them. Ah, that's great. So China probably will solve this, but maybe not. Um, you know, I buy. I've, I've never had an accident. I've never had one. I, buy, I pay. Five thousand U.S. dollars a year for insurance. The, the probability of, of of getting an accident is one percent, but I pay five thousand dollars for insurance. One e, <laughs> right? And so that's how I want China to start thinking about inequality.
there is causal. Or what happens if things happen and high, as if countries grow and slow down and they're highly unequal, that leads to instability and stagnation and collapse. So let's solve it now. <laughs> just my bullshit. You push Shangxin, what a gosher. Just Shangxin, my bullshit. To pop. Let's be risk averse, okay? So, um, so that, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so um, uh, this is, uh, I call it the iron law of income inequality. Uh, income inequality today is very high. I'm asking the question how high is human capital inequality? education, health, nutrition, because that's going to determine tomorrow's in, in income inequality. If income, if, if human capital, especially in a globalized world, <laughs> right? Um, and, um, yes? So that, um, that song, the, the plus, does that imply both on the material? Well, I mean, I, in fact, I mean, in fact, there can be, um, uh, I, I yeah I don't think this is uh, this is actually a, a formula. I think that it contributes. This could actually fall, right? Yeah. A little, yeah. but if if I think that if this is high today in a globalized modern industrial world, it's going to translate into very high income inequality. So it's it's this is going to push you up towards high income inequality or keep you high. Right, this could come. I mean, you could see you could see unskilled wages rising faster than than uh, and, and faster than uh, professional wages, right? Which would then keep keep that down. So neither of those are either uh, of those are necessary. Good. That's what I, that's how a theorist would look at it. Yes. No, I think that's I think that's a way to look at it. Exactly. Uh, if 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 we have high income inequality today, uh, we're probably going to have high income inequality tomorrow. High, high education, human capital inequality today, it's going to translate into high income inequality tomorrow. Right? <coughs> I, I want to get so, um, and and the reason is just very quickly. It's because. I think that the link to stagnation and instability is growth is going to slow. Justin says, I hear Bach, I hear Bach, I hear Bach. He's not cheating, I hear Bach. Oh, he's not cheating. Oh, he's not coming down. But I think all really growth economists know that it's going to go. Ba ba ba, chi chi chi, six six six, six five five five, four four four, three three three. You know, it's yeah. You know, I don't know how long that's going to be, but it's going. It's going to by 2030. It's going to be well below five. So okay, and now and so suddenly this this pie, this dungal, this uh, cake that's been getting bigger and bigger, and everybody, even if you're even if you're in the bottom end of the income distribution, the high paid to high paid shirt, suddenly this pie stops growing, right? And you have, with 53 genie, you have sun iren are poor or lower income. Not, those are equite irma with the pink and ginger shop, but they're poor. They're in the bottom end of the income distribution. Right? And now, what do those guys do? Right? You know, Mexico is usher sun. China is usher sun. In Mexico, what do those guys do? Their growth rate is three percent. But those those guys have three choices in Mexico. What if you're poor in Mexico? What are your three and you're uneducated? What are your three choices? One, you can yeah you can you can uh, take <coughs> you can <laughs> One yeah, there's about a ten percent of of you of, of Mexico's labor force in the U.S. Maybe it's fifteen percent now. That's very high. That's number one. Two. What do you do? Da da boom, right? You you do you're in the informal economy, so you have no baoshan, you have no formal wage job, you have no protection. You you just you know you sure, uh, uh, you're a baomu, you might you know you uh, mi right? You you do this informal, and there's almost no hope of getting better. 
Okay? Three, what's the third thing they do? Crime. You're crime. Right? They go into organized crime, right? Funds are true. Right? And so now if we're thinking about Erling Sanding Da Erling Selina China, and you have 300 million people in this <coughs> slow growth economy, what can they do? How do I They can't be. There's no place to go. Right? Okay, that's number one. Two, they can be informal workplace, or three, uh, uh, they can do crime. And China, Fabi, Bangkai, to China. 5,000 years ago, China developed crime, <coughs> organized crime, or more. I mean, this is all through history, so don't think it can't happen. And then, think of Sairin, EE, what? I'm not going to be married. There's Ba Chen Wan Ren, Chen Azur Bu, Nan De Binu De Duo Ba Chen Wan in Erling San Ning Yen. Okay, at least. Okay? And so now you're, un and, and of course it's low income people who don't get married, low income men. And so now you have 300 million informally employed or unemployed, and 100 million are unmarried. Talk about, talk about a really dangerous situation. So I think that's that's now um, now if they all are educated, you know Taiwan by from your e by the in Shandashi. I don't think all of them go to Dashi, but but and that's their biggest social problem is too many Dashi shown, right? Um, and the, that that um, uh, uh, that's a better problem to have than uh, Brazil or Mexico. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I said, what's the nature of human capital today? I'm, I want to look at China as core rural areas, other rural, and then cities, right? Is uh, we know that half, the China is now half urbanized, right? But really only by right? And they all have just one or zero kids. So, yeah, only 25 are city, Chengshir, Zhuming, the Haida. Okay? Um, half, almost half, are Pingquin, Nongchun. So that's Xibu, the Nongchun, or Zhongbu, the Zhongwei, Shui, Pi, Isha, the Nongchun. Half. My brother's sister, Lil. Okay? The Haida. Shin Dai Shang Yorin, the Haida. Half of them are in four rural areas. <coughs> NPRC said that's impossible. Almost, we're almost uh, we're almost urbanized, <laughs> but that's those are right from the census. Okay, so those they are from the census. So it's 80 million kids. So I'm going to compare 80 million kids, uh, and I'm going to look at everywhere from from college to infants, baby, child, baby. Okay, um, and let's look at college now. Um, I don't think every single kid needs to go to college now. I mean, I think that we need to dramatically increase college enrollment in China. And we need to take out Julian. <laughs> okay, so we need to do that. But I, not every kid, but I like to start at this, because it's sort of like, uh, you know, nigga, Beiji to Haile Min to Iceberg, right? Me too, Pei Kan Shang Min, right? By Hundred Joshu, that Shang Min. But the, the college is like the, the tip of the iceberg. And this is any college, right? If you go to eat by the Nongchun Haiza, right? Only eight go to college. Any, none of the college. Sanben, Suben, Dajuan, only eight from poor rural Urban, it's 70 out of 100. So it's like uh, eight times as much. Now that's none of the Dajuan. If you go to Sianji, the or elite or yao yao, right? It's 21 times. Uh, you guys know this, right? I mean, this is, uh, you probably have very few, uh, the Shang Bei Da, that very few, Baba Mama Dozhi Nomi, the Nega Haiza. There's almost there's very few. Uh, do you know how many, this is uh, five years ago, Ling Jiu Nian Gao Kao Zhi Ho, Yo Do Xiao Ping Kun Nong Kun. New depths of housing to Tsinghua Da Jia, then Bei Da, of Chablo or Iwan Wu Chenga, right? How many? Seven. 
只有七个。<笑> There's only seven, and four are for baptism. Three to me, right? There's only four. yes. So if a uh, uh, a child from a poor rural area goes to a college or a four-year college, how likely is that to, to find a job um, which employs the skills when he or she gets out, relative to somebody from an urban area? In other words, how how much social capital is necessary? So is is there any is there any right? Um, uh, there's a myth in China, this was the same myth I was talking about that was in Japan in the 70s, that there's too many college students. If you go look at the media, I have my group now, there's, there's two people that every day look at every newspaper or lots and lots of newspapers in China, and they're looking for articles that say unemployment rate of college kids is high, and it's everywhere right now. Every single city's talking about that, right? And then that gets everybody really, really, okay. Now go, and uh, the, um, Tai Fung did this four years ago. We're gonna do it this year with Hong Bin. <laughs> we're gonna, Li Hong Bin, we're gonna go in May, a year later before the next. So if they would have written this article two months ago, they would have found out that 97% of those kids had a job. <laughs> okay, and uh, now, do they have the same job? Are they working in, you know, did they get a college degree and are they working in Foxconn making iPhone 6s? Some of them, okay, but uh, uh, what you do, what Typhon also shows, that then people say, well, wait a minute, but they're only, they're making less than a taxi driver, you know, and they're often the rural kids from these poor universities. Mm -hmm. um, but then he says, this was 2007, he looked at kids that have been thought out for five years, and he found out that their wage growth was about 25% a year. And so by five years out, even these, these poor level universities on average had a growth rates twice GDP, you know, and it was growing at 13%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, now I don't, you know, again, we need to redo this study now because the economy is changing so fast. But, but my feeling is, is that, um, uh, and, and even if there's a temporary glut, there's a temporary glut, that's what I'm saying, you know, China only has 12% of its labor force has a college degree. If they're gonna become a high income company, you need 40% <laughs> or 30% of the labor force, you know, 30 years out. So these kids are gonna be, even that they're getting a little, they'll be in demand if China continues to grow. That's what I think, so it's, uh, um, and, I think we need to study these low, now, of course, Xi Jinping wants to change these universities into, into technical colleges and teach them how to weld, you know, which I think is a total disaster. But that's another, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So, so. Okay, um, so I don't want to get bogged down with that, okay? So um, while all kids don't need to go to college now, I'm not saying every kid needs to go to college. Uh, uh, children, I think children should be going to high school. Right? Um, it's more important at this stage of development that all kids get the skills a few they need 20 years from now. But only 37% of junior high, uh, um, actually this should be of kids who start junior high, um, because of the dropout rate, uh, go to academic high school. So here, here is across the huge, so almost everyone in the city goes to high school, 90%, while 37% of kids go to high school. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Um, who does that look like, okay? What kind of a country has that level at this? This is South Korea and Taiwan uh, in, in both Da Chongshik and Nan Chongshik and Nongchun, who's the Taiwan and Nongchun. In the 70s, the wage rate was, he quite made and he got Chongshik. Uh, the wage rate in China in 2000 was one dollar an hour. Oh, 2002 was one dollar an hour. In 1978 in Taiwan and South Korea it was one dollar an hour. Okay, the wage rate here is almost three. It's two and a half. So <laughs> this is so we're already past this. But when the wage rate was one dollar an hour, every single person in China, I mean, in, in South Korea and Taiwan, Shang Gao Zhong, Pu Gao. They didn't have a jerk off. They, there was a U.S. system of pool golf. So every single kid, and I often ask people, nigga, tell you Buddha, I said, why did you, I mean, it's one dollar an hour. Why are you sending every kid to, every kid to high school? And you know what they said? 
Their answer is, we're a Confucian society. You know, we believe in Confucius and education. So everyone has to have high education. And I said, oh, wait, China's, <laughs> you know, China's a Confucius country. <laughs> how come 37% of the people don't go to, you know, right? So, uh, but look at Mexico, right? Wait a minute, China, Mexico, China, Mexico. <laughs> I mean, China looks like Mexico. You look like Latin America, right? You want to be Latin America? You look like it with education. So you don't look like East Asian. You don't look like a country. It's not Xinxila. It's not Ireland. It's not who, um, uh, Israel. It's not, these are countries that made it, right? I mean, it's, I think it's really dangerous. So why is high school attendance so bad? It's, it's all Shibu de Nongchun and when we look at counties, the counties that are middle income or lower middle income. Okay, so that negative, of all, of all five-year-olds, that counts for 46% of all five-year-olds. So for about half of, this is half of China. Half of five-year-olds in China are going to these schools. So where is the school called? What's that? Where is the Yes. Yeah, and in poor areas, in poor areas, it's the same. I, I realize in Beijing, it's different, right? That's why the Chita Nong Chun, right? That's why we look over here. This, this is a strange, these are strange, you know. Actually, they do pretty good. Uh, there's, they, 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 go to, they go to college, much lower rate, but they go to high school, a higher rate. So. So that's like Beijing. That's the Beijing taxi driver, right? The kid, the kid of the Beijing taxi driver, right? So he he's in Beijing. He's actually counted as Chengmi in in urbanization. Cheng Shihua figures they count as urbanized, but they're Nongchun Hukou, and their kids are Nongchun Hukou, right? So, uh, so so that's not who I'm talking about. Zheng Bushi, Yanqing, the, the Yanqing men, okay? These are Henan, Xinxian. Uh, Kaifeng, um, uh, Luan, and Anhui, okay, those kind of things, okay. Um, okay, so let's keep going. Um, so why is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, why is it so low? Okay, um, one reason. Did you know that China has the highest tuition, Shifei, of any country in the world? By far, by far. Look, here's Liu Shi'erdeguoja, and then to Liu Shi'erdeguoja, by from your Bashu Shilin, Mianfei. Okay, and then you have like Vietnam, Shi'erdeguoja, right? And Peru, Milu Shi'erdeguoja. Okay, China is 160. It's off the chart. Hi, Professor. I know in many developed countries. Private high school and usually is very high. So in your charts, yeah. So so schools. yeah. These are public rural high schools. Okay, public rural high schools. So yeah, but in in most countries, most public education, most developed countries, most public education, uh, most high school is still public by far. In the U.S., it's ninety-two percent. So there's just a few, you know, elite, um, you know, uh, high schools. So most, by far, most are public rural high schools. So, so, so this is this is comparing public rural high schools, okay? And and of course this is important, right? Because two eight three children, it's also one sixty, right? In in the U.S. you can say, well, if I have money, I can select a private high school, but I can also go to I can if I want to go to a, in Chile or Turkey. If you're poor, you can always go to high school because it's free, right? Now maybe there's a private high school that rich Turkish parents send their kids to, right? Yes. Uh, can can the poor uh, rural students apply for tuition waiver from the local government? It, since 2011, early in that they're supposed to be the lowest 
15% uh, of kids, the poorest 15% can't apply for a tuition waiver. And so Jim Young Jung Fu sent money to all the counties to, uh, for poor, to, and about 90% of Xue Chu, of Gao Zhong Xue Chu, they use that money to gai xin de xue sheng jiao shi, xue sheng de jiao. They use it for building. They don't use it, for, they don't offer tuition. Less than 3% of poor kids get tuition waiver for, uh, now that's, a, that's one solution to it, right? The other solution is ni gen liu shi er ge qi ta de wo zhe yang zhu bin shen li. Right? Why not free public education, right? So that's that's the other option. So it's a, so those are those are two good options. So so your point is that the 60, 63 percent of the, the poor voters who do not go to uh, the high school is because of the financial constraints. Okay. It's not if, because of no, no. no. So I tell this to Gao Jing Ding or my I, I talk to my my collaborators do tell job go to Ministry of Education and they say that's not true that, 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 that yes it's high we know it's high but it's not true so we ask the question thank you <laughs> thank you for the question if we reduce tuition okay would more students go <laughs> it's exactly what you ask okay so we went to uh, uh, 15 poor counties in 132 junior highs in Shanxi and Hebei, right? Shanxi, Hebei, okay? Changzhou and, uh, uh, where is it, the Fengming, I uh, forget what's it, what's it called up there? Uh, uh, and then down here in Shangluo and Shanxi near Hubei and Henan. And uh, we went to 132 classes and we found <laughs> we found the two poorest kids in 132 classes and then we flipped the coin and said you you get a tuition waiver you you have to pay you didn't even know when we did this <laughs> so she knew she knew we, we actually um, so we created two identical groups we gave her and, and what we said to her is if you go to high school we'll pay for it and we didn't tell you anything. So you were just facing, so, so if there was financial aid, maybe this, has no, maybe this has no impact, right? Or maybe if financial aid isn't the constraint, it has no impact, right? And, and Zhao Yubu would say, ah, we don't think you have any impact here, right? And then we went in and told, we had to sign a, a form, this is the principal, and this is the parent, and this is our, you know, we have three-way signature. We tried to make it believe, and we did this to two sets of, we did this to two sets of kids, the two poorest kids in Chui, okay, in seventh grade, okay, and then we went to the two poorest kids in Chusan already. So they're they're just about ready to take Zhongkai. It's actually two months before the Zhongkai, because we thought if we gave it to them, she might work really hard and get into. But if we gave it to them. You know, there's no time to change behavior. It's purely, it's a pure uh, financial aid uh, uh, um, decision, right? Why are you keeping people out? So that's what we want to see. Did that, did that matter? And here, here's what happens to Chui Chou is 15 percentage points. Remember the base of Jiu Bai from the Sister Association Shangdashi, right? So in our of the students uh, of the control students. 40% went to high school. Of our treatment students that we gave tuition waiver, 55% went. So it was a 30% increase of poor students. So it had a significant impact. I mean, so it's, and because she worked hard, her grades went up, right? Now, these guys, it was a little different. There also were, um, uh, these guys, eight percentage points, so on a basis of 40, right? So it went from 41 to 49 percent, or 20 percent is 16, 17, nearly about 18 percent. So, um, so yes, so it is. Now, now what we found out was, if I gave her, if she was, right, if she was a really, really good student already, and he was a really, really good student already, they both went to high school. Okay. 
if if I gave it to you two and you were a bad student, <laughs> you were a bad student. But what Zhang Li, I gave I gave her a, a tuition waiver and her not. Neither of them. <laughs> but it was these kids in the the middle of the distribution that it mattered. So it's like, should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? And you know what the families are doing in their mind is saying. So they're already making that, they're saying, I want to go to high school so I can go to college, right? And so that's the kids in the middle of So I'm in Mayo, right? They're already, they'll never make it to college. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Now, I think they should still go to high school. I think they should still go to high school. Um, but, you know, that's, that's why I think that in Korea and Taiwan said they should go to high school. Oh, one more, yeah. Uh, for those who do not go to college, uh, but let's say they go to the technical high school, vocational high school, and high school, what's the expected earning difference? Uh, I'll, I'm going to show you in a second. No. Okay, just hold that question. It's good. Good. Guys, it's like, did you see my PowerPoint? <laughs> You're asking all the right questions. Good. Okay. Yeah. Same question. Okay. Good. Yeah, because this is a very important question. Uh, okay, so another could be strict quotas, right? I mean, the thing is, is. <clears throat> We all know that right? it's much harder to get into high school now, uh, academic high school, than it is to get into college. And academic high school, go to college. right? And, but there's very strict limitations. And this, of course, we all know is why if you go to if you go to these poor rural counties and say, we'd like you to make high school free, <laughs> because oftentimes, <laughs> is the high school. They're a money maker. Because high school is high, I mean, tuition is high, but more than that, they keep 10% of positions in high school. <coughs> you can buy points. You can buy Zhongkao points. And they're very expensive now. Um, uh, we had one kid, and he said he was chast he was a very poor kid. He was he is forty points lower. Um, you know, uh, it's quite a bit. Ushuan renminbi. His parents needed to come up with five hundred thousand, so he 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 went to work. So he's a huge money maker, and every xiaojiang zuo hao gong zuo is gao zuo de xiaojiang yi hou zuo zhujiang jiao yu zhujiang. I mean, so that's. You know, this is a huge business, you know, here. So it's, uh, okay. Um, and so our, our suggestion is, you know, our suggestion is uh, we should make high school free and we should make every kid go to high school. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, one year ago, Jiao Yu Buddha Buddha says, we won't eliminate tuition in academic high schools and we will not increase enrollment in academic high schools, okay? And so what do they want to do? It's what you guys said, they want, they want to expand Vocational ed, okay. That's that's the future. Okay, so let's look at vocational ed right here. Okay, just real quick. So we did a study uh, of the quality of Zhejiang Gaozhong in Zhejiang, the best province in China, right? Exactly. Uh, and uh, my, my wife's from Zhejiang, so I'm like Zhejiang the new sheep. <laughs> Son-in-law of Jaja, right? Exactly. But you love Taiwan. I do too. Yes, <laughs> and Beijing and uh, yes. Shanxi, Qinghai. Yes. <laughs> I love China. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so we went to we went to 75 VET programs in Jaja, uh, randomly selected, and we went to 65 in Shanxi. We actually chose 75 in Shanxi, and when we went to 10 of them, these are uh, these are registered programs. Who is getting money from the Jiao from Taizhong team for Zhejiang? We went to ten of them, and they were called them ghost schools, Gui Xiao, because there's no one there, and they're getting lots of money, but there's no one there. What they do is they enroll students, Nachian, and then they take students to Fushikang and let them go work, <laughs> and come to Fushikang Nachian, right? And then so there's no uh, there's there's no one there. There's z they're just an employment agency that collects a subsidy along the way. Um, and there's many many schools like that. They're just they're called ghost schools. 
Uh, so, we have, so we ended up only with 65 VET programs in Shanxi. And what we found was that we gave them uh, Gaoli, we gave them a vocational skills test. These were all Ying Yong, Ji Xuan Ji, and Shu Kong. Uh, digital control and applied computer. Major. Now you realize what applied computers is. It's Shoei Ji Sun Ji, but it's not. It's it's not. It's not correcting your laptop or my Mac. It's Sun Ba Liu and Sun Ba Liu. They practice how to how to repair um, 486s, right? And it's just okay. So so. Uh, in Zhejiang, though, the schools aren't bad. They learn vocational schools. So we gave them a test in Gaoyi, and we gave them a test in Gaoer the first, the first week. Okay? And they learn computer skills in Zhejiang. Now, we also gave them Shu Xue Zhongwa Yingyu. We also gave them basic education skills. They didn't learn anything. <laughs> but they didn't lose anything. Okay? They were the same level. Their, their, their tests the second year were the same as the test the first. They didn't learn any, but they didn't. Now, in Zhejiang, in Shanxi, it was the opposite. And we just finished Henan, and Henan, it's worse. It's, they didn't learn any vocational skills, zero. And their Chinese and math skills went down. So, Gao Er, they knew less math than they knew in Gao Yi. <laughs> and that's true. I mean, it's 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 just it's, just, it's true in Hunan. In Hunan, like I said, it's worse. It's it's even less on average. I mean, there's good schools out there, Yale College, but on average, they're deteriorating, right? Huang Yao, sure, because they don't take it they don't keep take it seriously. So we also went. You can see we also went in in San Shigashian. We went to like Zui Cha de Pugao. We went to the poorest academic high school because then you know there was a little bit of overlap of Zhonghao scores right and so in the Shang Pugao the Zui Shaman and the Shang Zhigao that that we could match them on their on their so they got the exact same Zhonghao scores these kids just decided to go to Zhigao and these kids got to, and, and the the Pugao kids learned a lot of math and science and, and English and Chinese. Same Zhong Hao scores. These guys went down, these guys went up. Number one. Number two is they learned more computer. Bu Shang Ji Zhuan Ji Ke, they learned more computer as a Gao Yi Sheng than an applied computer major in Zhigao. <laughs> and, and then just, you know, Zhiji Xue, right? You guys are all, yeah, I mean, you know that, right? You, can, you know so much more about computers. I've been studying computers for 30 years and you know a hundred times more than me, right? And these kids, they just learn it themselves. So, so what's the consequences? They're not stupid, right? They know they aren't learning anything, right? And so after one year, after two years, Okay, so 100 students, 39 of them are left. 29, 39, sorry, 39 of them are left. And then that's where we ask them, and half of them said, well, mama, baba, so it's my mother and father are making me, right? So it's, VET is like a torso, it's like a, pre, a daycare for teenagers. They aren't learning anything there. And we just finished another study, is one of uh, uh, 140 Jurgao. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> 38 of them are Zhongdian Jurgao, and 97 of them are Fei Zhongdian Jurgao. And you know what the answer is, is Zhongdian Jurgao do worse than Fei <laughs> Zhongdian Jurgao. Okay. So they got lots and lots of resources. But you know, it's, and, and of course now if you need to go go and ask people, what do you think of the quality of Jirgao? And everybody says it's terrible. <laughs> they say, I don't want my kid going, or I'm gonna put my kid there because it's free. It's yeah, so Jirgao is almost free for poor kids. Um, and it's because they're it took me a new should I shun Jirgao the new high to be shown Jirgao the not high to because you know, the families don't want their daughter to right? you know, they, let's just keep them in daycare, right? So, 
Yeah, it's really, it's very depressing. I mean, it's a, and of course, Xi Jinping just says, let's expand, he just said, let's expand it more because we need more skilled workers in China. So, um, sorry. yes. Good, good idea. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a really good question. So what should we do? Should we improve the quality or should we change it? <coughs> number one is let's think about, so the number one popular major, if you look at the, the Jiao Yu Bu, the, the Wang Wu, or Ge Jiao Yu Ting, it's applied computers, digital control, preschool, uh, and Kui Ji, and accounting. But when you go into these schools, you know what the number one, the number one major is? Pu Ban. It's academic high school uh, track. And so you go to Jiria Baoju, you go to VET, and the number one popular major is you go study math, English, Chinese, because you want to take the Gaokao and go to college. So there's a huge demand by parents to send their kids. To, so these are kids that didn't get in. So that's, that's number one. So the number two is, let's look at the rest of the world. So, uh, and let's look, where is the most famous vocational ed programs at? Germany, everybody says Germany, right? Uh, uh, Denmark, Holland, right, okay? Those are good football teams and good German. You know, when you're with China, a China group, it's, and right? At least, at least we went to the World Cup, right? <laughs> uh, sorry, you know, it's, uh, I, I, you know they did a come in Diao Chan Mei Guo five hundred Joe didn't know the World Cup was being played, <laughs> and then of the eight percent that did, you know, it's like half of them didn't care, right? So oh, yeah, that's yeah. So, uh, uh, but you know. American football, right, or NBA, that, that's, uh, okay, so, um, that they've actually done studies now, and one of my colleagues at Stanford named Rick, Eric Hanischek, or Rick Hanischek, did a study of, um, of vocational ed in Germany and Denmark, and it's a cross-country study, and they did it in the U.S., and they did it in uh, Canada, which has just academic high school. The US just has academic high school. Uh, Australia, sort of mixed. And then what he said was, let's go look at the performance of these laborers over time. Okay, and what he finds is even in Germany and Denmark and, and Holland, um, is that when you compare the workers who go to academic high school and the workers who go to vocational ed, is they, the vocational ed workers retire earlier Unemployment rates higher, and their wages are lower, and their so um, than their Jirgao counterparts, and it's even more when they try to match the lower end of Pugao in U.S., Canada. Now, now it's fraught with there's it's not a very good identification strategy, <laughs> okay? So don't take that as causal. But the fact is, is uh, Germany, you know, itself is in a constant struggle of should we, should we and the other thing it's very interesting the other thing i, I talked to the, the vice minister of education in germany and he said this just every year uh, they have a great big uh, uh, association of manufacturers come to the government and said could you have your jirgao produce more you know um uh, I don't know, welders or produce more accountants or produce more, you know, high-end uh, machine toolists or anything like that. And the, gov the government's had a long-standing policy saying, no, that's not our job. Our job is not to, our job isn't to support industry today. That's not, your call is not, we're trying to create students for Germany in Erling Sitting. okay? And so we think they need, so now if you go to Jirgao in Germany, I from your posture to Shijian, you study math, German, English, computer science. And then 20% of your time, you do 
you, you do some applied technical skill. So, and you know, actually in American schools, in Pugalban, we have a technical school track, and they spend about 20% of their time. So we have a system that's a lot like that. It's usually not done very well. <laughs> American schools aren't very good, you know, up until question yeah. yeah. How about the job performance, uh, job market performance of the vocational students compared with this uh, law school into high school? What do you think that tells? We don't know. Well, what do you think? What do you think they think? What, what, what do Bifurter Liu Shi the students think? I, 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 it's a good question. We need to do a returns the vocational ed study. We're going to follow. We're going to follow our kids uh, out because you know because we gave them a juice. We gave her right. She could go to Pugalban or to Jirgalban and go to go to school. Right now, most of them went to Pugalban, but well, we still had about fifty of them that went to Jirgalban who wouldn't have other guys gone. And then we have a whole bunch of them that didn't go. And so we're going to follow that cohort. It's, only, it's a very small sample. So it's really hard to get returns to, to this. It's hard to identify it. So, but my feeling is you look at 61% of the people that are, that are dropping out, and the number one reason that the son, by the son should Joe who drop out is because their parents wanted them to be in, in, pre, in tourist school. I think that the the returns is probably very, very low. Does this job out rate, uh, including those going to the uh, factory, sent in by the court? These are dropouts. Just drop out by These are themselves. dropouts, yes. Yeah. Maybe it's, 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 it's one person or so. I think that's probably why I'm going to drop out. So Or maybe, or maybe you saw they didn't learn anything. So if you're not learning anything, how is there going to be a positive return? Except if there's a signal. Maybe there's a signal out there. Right? I mean, there could be a signal effect. But I decided to go to Jergoff. So two guys. Me, you, you, you went to the labor force when you were in junior high, and you went to Jergoff, and you guys both applied for a job. And I said, oh, I'll pick you because you must be you know, maybe you didn't. You got. You actually didn't learn anything. You're actually dumber than him because you. For, no, he probably twinkled also. He also. He, well, we don't know how much he forgot. Yeah. So, um, I think this is a this is a question we need to study. Albert and Albert wanted. They're doing an union yeah, yeah. and they're they're trying to they're trying to use the rapid expansion of Jergal to identify that effect. So make sure he does it fast. <laughs> Three people, he asked the same question over there. So I think it's an important question. Um, my feeling is the returns are really low, just because the quality is really low. So at least school to provide information for the students to get to get to the job. Yeah, yeah, but if but if students don't need information. So so um, in China today, in I, I just went to Shenzhen. Okay, there's a shortage. There's a shortage. Okay, I went to Shenzhen mm -hmm. to a Dinzi Chie Xie Hui Di Ge Kai Ge Hui. So uh, uh, it was a coalition of electronic manufacturers, and the we were giving a paper. I was giving. I was. Uh, we've been helping one of my Stanford colleagues who works for Apple um, do a paper on turnover. And everyone you talk to, they say our turnover rate is 10%. Our turnover rate is 20%. Our turnover rate is 15% per month. There, it's per month, right? So 20% per month, after three months, you have to, every worker came and then left. Every worker came and then left. It's because there's one, there's 1.3 jobs for every one worker now in China. And so, do you need information to get a job? So, I mean, that's the question, right? I mean, maybe you're going to in the future. So I think that the, the, the real, I, so I always say we should get rid of Jirgal and, and go to free Pugal for everyone. But then everybody says, oh, that's just the wrong way to approach leaders in China. What we should do is say, let's raise the quality and, and change the focus of Jirgal. 
other things at the same time. I think people should also input the quality of the impact value pricing. Because you don't mean the top mid? Yes. I'm kind of in, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the favor of overall vocational high school. It's just because of the, of the, of the, the quality of the academic high school. Is just kind of Did you just see our study? <laughs> <laughs> the worst academic high school in these four areas do much better than the best Jirgao. Yeah, that's just because the, the Jirgao is a different word than the academic Okay, so, so, so. Yeah, no, I think what you need to do is to say, is we also need to, I mean, and then are we studying the right thing, right? Gao kao jirdu, you know, is this something that's really bad? I mean, we love, at REAP, my group loves gao kao jirdu. We love it. Because once these students, I mean, you guys know, you guys are the least. You kao jing chu da shi hope you don't need to do anything in college. It's completely <laughs> Every five hundred e by the on PA, right? And so we we recruit two hundred enumerators, Gao Chao Yuan, to go to Qinghai or go to Shanxi or to, and they love it. You know, they, they do it for free because they sure Qi right? And then we teach them something. We always have classes and we take them out, but they don't need to go to class. So we love that. Now I think it's terrible for China, right? That, that you go these great, you know, brilliant people. Now, you know, Beida, Renda, Jeda, you know, these, you guys are, you know, they're motivated, self-motivated. But that's just one small part of this big pot, right? So, I, and, and it all starts with Pugal. It starts with that whole system. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know much about that. That's just capital observation. Okay, so maybe this problem start before upper decision. Maybe it starts in junior high, okay? So let's examine, okay, so you remember we went to 175 junior highs in Hebei and, um, in Hebei and Shanxi and Anhui. And Diigashinchi, the first, the first month, the first month, we uh, first week, I'm sorry, first week in Joe, we asked these Chui Shou, what do you want to do three years from now? And they had four answers. They had four answers. Uh, I'm gonna to go to the labor market. Right? Uh, I'm gonna to go to academic high school. Not many of those, but 10%. So this was about 30%. This was about 10%. Academic high school half said, I want to go to academic high school. Now, 37% end up going, so there's some wishful thinking there, but 50% of them say that, and then undecided. You know, right? When I was in when I was in Chujong, I would have said undecided. Actually, what am I gonna do three years from now? Right now, I'm undecided, right? I mean, what are you gonna do for three years? I'm undecided, right? So, but 10% said undecided. Okay, then we came back a year later, and we gave them something called an IRT scaled test. An RRT scale test is so when Julia Ihao gave him a culture, the whole dear name the Liu Yifan gave him a culture, and these two tests were linked. And so we could actually measure absolute learning, uh, uh, absolute increase in learning. And look what we found. <coughs> this is in junior high, is, is late. The kids who want to go to the labor market, the kids who want to go to vocational, the kids who are undecided, all had negative learning. They all had pulled out, they had positive learning. This is, now, what's happening here? It's all about and the number one incentive for junior high teachers, right? their, their promotion as a teacher in junior high is, how many of your kids do you send to high school? Because the counties want all the kids, to, they want the kids to go to high school so that, that that's their number one thing. This is the whole thing about gao kao fast tracking, okay? And so what do they do to these kids, okay? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I, I missed the slide. Um, so what we did with these guys here, oops, so um, we then looked at their, we gave them a mental health uh, depression and anxiety test. 
you get tau chi, what do you call it? depression? So when you're depressed, uh, it's a little of what? Yeah, I think, right? Yeah. So we gave an anxiety, <laughs> and about 25% of the kids coming into Chui were depressed or anxious, all right? And then one year later, we gave them the same test, and these kids, 74% were anxious or depressed. And these kids, it went up just a little bit, like, like 25% or something like that. And the whole reason is, is because the teachers, first day I have uh, 70 students here, and after about a month, I figure out you guys are the good guys. Yo, shun gao jung the shi wang. I'm gonna put you in front, and then you guys are the bad guys who want to go to the labor market, want to go to vocational high school. You know, I, I'm completely uninterested in you, and just shut up. Ninety-eight <laughs> percent of kids I got are, are hit by their teachers. Of the bad students, of the good students, only about twenty percent. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> and and it's it's a and you go and so we've had we've had students that go do observations in classrooms that sit there for two weeks and three and they say it's just you know that. They rain terror on the poor kids, and they take care. They really, and of course, what happens is, is it creates anxiety, and it creates depression, and it creates just this negative learning, right? I mean, they they, they stop learning, and of course, they're not stupid, right? It's just like jerk off. And after one year, thirteen year old back, just the thirteen year olds told you, by now this is. This is set, uh, 750 schools, Chiba and Shigatoyo, the Chujong, in seven provinces. So this isn't a small sample, this is a big sample. By, by, by the end of eighth grade, it's 29%. By the end of grade nine, it's 38%. 38% of kids are dropping out of junior high. Um, between Zhou uh, Lingnian and Yao Sinian this year. We just finished one. So, and it's Yue Lai Yue Huai. Yeah, why? Well, why is it worse and, why is it getting worse and worse? Why is it getting worse and worse? <laughs> exactly, right? Five years ago, it was, they could make $1.50 an hour. Now they, uh, now they can make $2.50 an hour, right? Almost double the earnings of being able to, when you drop out. Learning anything, and you're anxious, and you're being, and you're being terrorized by your teacher, and you can make $2.50 an hour, of course you're gonna drop out. This is, this is a, now, let's go to Jiao Yu Nian Jian, right? And let's, oh, let's go to, let's go to Lianhe Guo, let's go to the Millennium Development, let's go to New York, and look at China's Millennium Development Goals. And one of the development goals is 98% of your students will finish grade nine. And China was the first lower income. They were, they were kind of lower income because back when they started the development goals, China was still a poor uh, country. They were the first poor country to meet the nine year, 98% of the students going to uh, finish ninth grade nine. Pian. It's not true. And you go to any, just go there and ask. You need to get the, you need to get the Xiaojiang off to the side or any teacher and say, what's your biggest problem? Every single principal will say, dropouts. How many dropouts? And they always say, do you want the number of dropouts that I tell, that I tell the bureau or do you want the actual number? And of course, if they have one dropout, so they can have zero dropouts. They can't have dropouts, but 38% of their kids are dropping out. So it's, I mean, of course, you don't want dropouts because some men wish I like it. The, 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 the compulsory education fee is dependent <coughs> on the number of kids in school. So you want all your kids in school. So you just report that all your kids are in school. So it's, it's, this is very, very common. Just go to any, any poor area of junior high. Um, so what are kids dropping out of junior high? They barely know how to read, they barely know, and they're angry. I mean, that's the thing that, 
that, that as you do qualitative work is they're, they're angry at the school, they hate their teacher, but of course they hate the government too because is in school. It's the only place they've ever seen society. So they're really, really angry kids. And they go, go, go to Fushikam and talk to kids about their school. Talk to kids about the government. They hate the government. They hate school. They hate their teachers. They hate their parents. I mean, I mean, seriously, there is a lot. And now there's just there's lots of very sweet kids. And then you start talking about Dinza Yoshi, and you start to talk about good food, and you start to talk about, you know, football, and, you know, and they're nice kids, right? But then you, 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 you start them to talk about their feelings, and they get, they get really angry. You know? That's happening all over rural China. I'm not, well, Bushu I mean, this happens, this is not me, this is our, you know, uh, uh, again, uh, 750 schools. Okay, uh, maybe how many, uh, how about elementary school? Now, you know, Yuen Lai, the, the, the buildings, the teachers, and the curriculum were really bad in Shaoxi. You know, it was like Shi Wang Gongzhan, right? It's like there's this horrible dirt thing with Cao Fang and no lights. And uh, uh, I used to, and it was good for me. I liked that, right? Because I could take a, Yo Chen, the Stanford, the Xiaoyo, a, a very rich Stanford alum from Hong Kong or from Taiwan or from America. And I took them to this really poor school and they felt really bad and they give us a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but today it's hard to find those schools. It's very hard to find those schools. It's, the, the facilities are not bad. They built new classrooms, new susha, new dormitories. Since I showed Lao Shu to susha, they're building new dorms for the, for the teachers. Uh, they have really nice playgrounds, not nice, they have better playgrounds. They aren't bad, I mean, it's, the, the facilities have improved remarkably. So, and that's good. And the teachers now are better. Now, you know, the central government pays all the salaries. No teacher is owed salaries, they're all paid. And they doubled salaries in 2009, right? It's a good job to be a teacher. And they're getting lots of young girls. <laughs> so there's two types of teachers in school. 45 to 60 year old old men and uh, 22 to 26 or 27 year old young girls and of course they want to go to Shintum to teach or they're gonna go have a baby you know and, and they leave school so these are these young teachers are always turning over but the, the new teachers are good and they're fresh and they're teaching more, okay so uh, and the coach on Yijin guy, okay. So so it's there's a huge difference, right? But I think the biggest difference is nutrition and health between city and rural, okay? Because this is this is what I think. If if you take a kid and ta du zhe e hu zhe ta ping xue, or his he's got worms or he can't see, and you put him in Rin Da Fu Xiao. You put him in Rin means, you know, uh, uh, attached elementary school. That kid's not going to learn. Take him and put him in Palo Alto schools in, in California. He's not going to learn because he's sick, right? A sick kid's not going to learn. So the question is are kids really sick in China today? You probably told my male teens will boy, the kids are sick, right? So between 2008 and 2012, our group, we we Xi'an Zhao Da, the Yi Xue Yuan, the Hu Shi, we, we've been and tested 60,000 kids for iron deficiency anemia. Shanxi, Shanxi, Gansu, Qinghai, Ningxia, Sichuan, Guizhou. All of them. Look at, look at the rate of, look at the rate of malnutrition, undernutrition, 33%. It's like, this is Yao Ernie. Okay? There's 33% of kids are, are anemic, right? Uh, how, about, how about the big cities? Uh, there's a CHNS, um, that's Bay, Bay Cock, uh, CHNS data. Probably a lot of you know this data, it's a public advantage. They, they did that for Ling Zhou Nin, they did it for the city kids. And they found out that 8% were Ping Shui, okay, 8% were, but who were they? Of the 8%, 7%, uh, 7 percentage points, so almost all of them were young girls, pa-pang, 
who chew rope. <laughs> and just the young girls who didn't want to eat meat, who wanted to be, you know, uh, nice, shapely, and, and get a boyfriend or something. That's who's, that's who's, now, in the U.S., six percent of our kids, six percent of our kids are ping shaped in school, and five percent of points of them are young girls who don't want to eat meat because they want to be shapely and they're, they become undernourished. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a modern, you know, health problem here. Here it's uh, uh, boys and girls are equally the same. By their sons are to boys, by their sons are to girls. It's exactly the same rate for both boys and girls uh, out there. Um, now, of course, you probably say, well, wait a minute. Uh, so in 2011, the country, the country said, uh, this is a big problem, we want to solve this problem, and so we're going to provide yin yang zhong chan, nutritious school lunch, to every kid in poor areas. 692 counties, 26 million kids are going to get a free nutritious lunch every day. Right? That's in, in, 2000 and, uh, in, in 2012. So our most recent anemia study was June 2012, so uh, six months after this. And what we found was anemia rates were still 25%. So six months after um, uh, this study. And the problem is we're actually going back this year. We're going back to the same schools we went to in 2008, 9, 10, and 11. And we're going to see the same schools, the same grades. We want to see after three years of the Christian. But I'll tell you, there's no change. That's our, that's our hypothesis. There's no change. And it's because the National Nutritious Lunch Program has become a free, non-nutritious lunch program. And it's because they only gave three yuan from the national government. And of course, the local government, yao pei tao san kuai. And of course, no local government ever does that. They all, they all just, so it's just three yuan, and three yuan is enough to give um, a, a bowl of rice, one egg, uh, one, maybe some shin tai, some shu tai. That's three, that, and your three yuan is gone. Because uh, you have to cook it, you have to hire a cook, you have to, and so, um, and it's free. Now, the parents like it because it's free, right? But um, it's the, the, the anemia rates are probably really high. In Beijing, it costs uh, nine yuan, sangatai <laughs> tang, okay, for a nutritious lunch. And a nutritious lunch should give you from 40 to 50 percent of your RDA, recommended daily allowance of, of vitamins and minerals and proteins and calories. Uh, China's they get about five percent. So in for three yuan, so you need nine yuan. And I think that this is this is a huge, um, so it's still a big problem. The next problem is, Jinxin. We we were uh, Albert Park did this in 2003. We've now repeated it uh, six. Da Suiji Ganyu. We've done six big randomized control trials on eyes, on vision, and of course, what you find is every single place it's sort of the same the same problem. You test. 20,000 kids and Uchinda should come to This is Sunyanji, Unyanji, Leonyanji. Okay? Now, it, in, in Beijing, it's 30 to 40 percent. Okay? In the rural areas, it's 25 percent. So that's bad news, right? The good news is, Ni Jing Shu Yan, Ni Jing Shu Yan, Ni Jing Shu. The good news is, it's really an easy thing to solve. Right? Just put on a pair of glasses and you're done. Right? But of course the problem is, is that of the 5,000 kids, Xiao Yan Jing, only Liu Bai Ga Dai Yan Jing. Right? Si Qian Si Bai Ga Bu Dai Yan Jing. Right? So no one, no one would, you go to a school with 200 kids in rural China, Si Nian Ji, Wu Nian Ji, Liu Nian Ji, and you'll find two or three kids have glasses in the whole thing, in the whole school. Always. It's everywhere. It's like that. And of course, what if you ask if you ask the principal, do you have a vision problem here? He says, Yeah, we have a vision problem. Three of our kids need glasses. Well how about the rest of you guys? Oh how much are known to the heights. They're they're rural kids. They're outside. They're strong. 
you know, they don't have vision problems. It's not like those wimpy, it's not like those hanru, the chung shu right? Who, you know, they say, and the, our kids don't need glasses. Well, actually they do, right? 25% of them do. Okay. So, if you, if you give them glasses, <laughs> on average, this is, that we're gonna get into, this is the, I'm gonna look at this again, on average, uh, the tr um, the treated uh, the, tr the, the, the this is the uh, average treatment effect is 11 but 0 0.11 standard deviations. So if we give 100 kids who need glasses in the Ganyuzu and 100 kids who don't who need who need glasses in the Doijiazu, and we give glasses to these kids and we don't give glasses these kids, these kids grades go up. By Lindian E E the Belgian Okay? It's not very high, but it's still significant. It's not bad. But the problem is, it's because if you give a hundred pairs of glasses out, only 40 of them or 30 of them wear them. 60 of them or deal or the If you wear those glasses, if you wear the glasses, it goes up by Lindian sun. So these are the effect of the treated on the uh, the effect of the treatment on the treated. So these are the kids who jinshu and die, and their grades go up by 0 0.32, very high. And then you have liangzhong jiaoshi. You have two types of teachers. One type of teacher uses PowerPoint. No, he. One type of teacher just talks. Another type of teacher writes on the board. If you're in a, and about half the teachers write on the board. If you're in a classroom with a teacher that writes on the board, the impact is 0 0.6. It's huge, it's huge, huge impact uh, on, on the kids. It's the biggest impact we've ever had in any, in any experiment. So it's a big, big, it's a huge problem. Now, the question is why don't the kids wear glasses when you give them free glasses? What, what's the number one reason? So we gave we gave a hundred pair and sixty of them Buddha. What's the number one reason for not wearing? Them? What? Uh, that's number three. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's good. I think if you're not a soccer problem, it has some problems. Tell us who 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 may have gotten the more effective study. Sure. That's the effect of the treated on the, That's the effect of the treatment on treated. It's this is the I this is the. Uh, average treatment effect, and this is the effect of the treat on the treat. There's selection in there. Yeah. Absolutely, sure. That's right. Okay. Um, Blue space. What's that? Blue space. T uh, t uh, okay, that's number four. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, though. You're, you're, uh, number two is. Well, let me tell you. You put the glasses on the kids. It's 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 a magical moment. <laughs> I mean, it's really fun. And this is what, this is the second most fun project we do, because you put the glasses on them, and two things happen. One time they stumble <laughs> because they've never seen the world clear. The other thing is they smile. You know, they go, "Wow, it's so clear." So, so you think they would wear them, mm -hmm. right? Basically, they are too precious to wear. They're, I, oh no, no, that's I, I, in fact, a few people say that, but not many. <laughs> That's an odd way of thinking, though. I mean, it's, it's, there, there were things. What? There were things that No. That's the important. Number one is that Lao Shi Burang Tam and Dat. The teacher won't let them wear them. Why? And number two is my parents won't let me wear them. Why? 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 Well, you guys are, you guys, who's from a rural area? They should know. So why? You're from a rich rural area. Absolutely, 100%. But then you say, why don't those city kids care? They go, oh, the city kids are rich, and uh, if you get a dependency on glasses, they're rich enough to buy glasses forever. Right? And so I don't want to buy glasses, and uh, uh, so it's... Yeah, that's the number one reason. Or, or they think the other. I, when you said precious, it's the opposite. They think that it might like break, and then the glass you know, oh. will put their eye out. And they'll become blind. And of course, so when we train, but with our glasses, that's not a problem because when we train them, 
Isolor, Isolor, uh, Essilor, the largest lens manufacturer in the world, they gave us the lenses. And, and when we trained them, we put the lens on the table, took a hammer, and, went, Boom! and of course it didn't break. Right. And so we try to make sure that that's not the reason. We didn't, we didn't know it was going to be such a big problem, the teacher. Okay, so that's, that's the big problem. So we go to Shanghai and Suzhou Mingong Xiao. Okay, and we do the same thing. 50 schools, we give them glasses. 50 schools, we don't. Now what we do is we tell the teachers, we're going to make Yoji Dui, Da Yoji Dui. We're going to make gorilla visits, three gorilla visits. We're not going to tell you we're coming. We're going to go in and we're going to look in your class. And if 80% of the kids are wearing their glasses three times, we're going to give you an iPad. <laughs> and if it's two times in a Xiaomi, and three, <laughs> like one time we're going to give you a e bike question and your And then if you miss zero, we're going to, you know, scold you, right? Exactly. Okay, so what, what happened? So, what was the wearing eyeglass rate in those schools? 87%. Exactly. <laughs> now, now the, the nice thing is we. Remember, we have a good experiment, so we can address this. So right now, Shan, Shi, and Dan Su, where we did this, they've actually changed policy. So now the policy for Xiao, for Xiaoxue is that they should wear glasses if they have. These are the first two provinces that have changed their policy. Okay, And the reason is, is we used our experiment, right? So in the Jixian, in the, in the baseline, we have vision. And in the inline, we had vision. And then half the kids we gave glasses, and half the kids we didn't give glasses. And guess what we found? Is it may tall, okay? It's not, it's actually true, is on average vision between uh, fifth grade and sixth grade got worse. But it got worse for everyone. And it got less worse for the kids who wore their glasses than for the kids who didn't wear their glasses. Now there's behavior in there, <laughs> okay? So you have to match and everything like that. But we don't care, because we just want, we want the kids to wear glasses, so the, the Shanxi government doesn't know about selection. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? so we had to worry a little about that. The other thing we did was, what the first thing they'll say is, we don't need glasses, what do we have? Every day we do eye exercises, right? Right, and of course, you probably did them every day in your school. Right? <laughs> but, but in our uh, Lamba in our 250 schools, 160 of them did eye exercises every day. And 90 of them, 90 of them didn't do them. Okay? So, and we have, we have the baseline and we have the inline of vision. And so we can say, how much did the kids in the control schools, okay? So, not the kids who wore glasses, in the control schools, how much did the kids change if they were doing eye exercises? How much did they do if they didn't do eye exercises? Exactly the same. It's 100% the same. So, so that's convinced them, the, the Shanxi and Hood. And so now, now what we're doing is we're doing a big pilot, uh, a whole Dichu, a Yulin Dichu. The entire Yulin is giving free glasses to all the kids um, who need them. And, they're going to try to become a Chen Guo Shirley Bao Hu Zhong Dian Chen. But they want to become a model, national national model for vision care. And uh, the Shu Ji, you know, is very interested in becoming you know, promoted. <laughs> okay. Last thing is t intestinal worms. So uh, who wants? You know, do you want to come and help us do research with REAP? Everybody wants to come. And then I show them this. Our, our biggest project last year was was to collect data on worms, <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Ooh. Yeah, so, uh, and then this, you have, you have to watch a lot. <laughs> oh, this is really bad, right? And what did we find? Is we found this is. Oh, I'm sorry. This is. I didn't update this. 2013. So it's, it's the same in 2013, basically, as it was in 2010. 
So 42% of kids in Guizhou have worms in their belly every day. And they're lethargic and they're pingshu and they don't feel good. They miss a lot of school, right? 42% of the kids. I mean, it's, you know, you, know we, you can see the worms in them like that. And you know, millions yeah. of children are infected with these. Yeah, um, who's home? When you were in school, how old are you? Are you 30? Are you just like? Maybe. Over? Maybe. Yes or no? Yes, okay. When you were in school, did you take Baba Khan? Yes. Sure. Because you Who did? Did anybody here take it? Yeah, right. So, so yeah, these are young guys. So everybody in China over 30, the first day of class every single year, in yeah. the first semester and the last second semester was the A to Z worming pill. Yeah. Uh, been the same. Yeah. And of course now, none, zero. Nobody, it's, it's illegal, it's not illegal, it's against policy to give deworming pills to schools. Xian uh, Yuan can give deworming pills. But deworming pills are what? Wufen, they cost five cents. Five, five, ling de wu yuan. Ling de wu yuan, right. Five cents for a deworming pill. Do you know what it costs? Do you know what it costs to do a test like that? It costs 55, it costs 55 yuan to test if you have worms or not, but it costs five fun to just take a deworming pill. Now, the, the problem is, is um, how about the 55% of the people who don't have worms? Should they be taking deworming pills? Well, when you took deworming pills, you probably didn't have worms, but she did. And she did, and he didn't, but he did. But everybody <coughs> took it, and it's a very safe, super safe medicine. But, Millennium Development Goal, you want to reduce intestinal worms below by from the I mean, I'm sorry, this is not millennium. This is a WHO standard. If w, uh, World Health Organization, if your whole trend or the by from the you should not give deworming medicine to everyone. You should go test for worms, and if you have worms, then you take a medicine. But of course, you know, this is Guizhou, right? And, and Beijing has zero, right? And Guizhou has 50%. So um, these kids, okay, the last thing, and then, then we're done with inequality. <laughs> uh, what about Chen Yi Chen Tian? The first three years are really important. Heckman. Right? Heckman is uh, uh, early education, early education, early education. <laughs> three things that are important. Right? Okay, so we went to 2,000 moms and their babies in southern Shanxi um, here. Um, and it was actually really interesting. It was really interesting because we went to Jisheng Wei, but now it's called Wei Ji Wei, right? Uh, since they've combined. And there are partners doing this. And they gave us a list of moms with babies, in every village. So, so we went to a town, we picked one village, and then we had, a, a, we had on average, 12 babies were born per village. We recruited half of them, and we, so we thought there were six babies. So our power calculations at six babies per village. Um, and we went to the village and there was only two babies, or three babies. And now, now that there's this, and, and that the, the parents take their babies to the village, um, to the Zhenshan, or Xianshan, or Xi'an, because it's cleaner, and it's, ah, oh, it was so hard to get a hold of them. Now, we went and, and chased them, and we actually found Zhu Zai Xi'an, the babies, and Zhu Zai Nong the baby were the same. I mean, and I'll show you what, what I meant. So, so, um, but we ended up done by Wushu Chiga Tsun in in Shri Gashen and Iba Chisha Sida Xiang. So uh, it's a big, big sample. All of them are Hanzu, Meo Shaosu Minzu. So these are all Han moms. And guess what for babies? 49% your ping fit. And we know that if you're anemic as a kid, 
it's going to affect the way your brain develops. And if you don't become non-anemic by the year three, is your brain, you're gonna significantly, there's a probability you're gonna significantly reduce your IQ. And San Sui Jo Hoga IQ guy into that. You can't, you, can't, you can't increase brain connections. Okay, so half the Chinese babies, is right? they're not sun yet, right? They're not sun yet, okay? Um, but we wanted to say, what about their cognition? So we gave them a baby IQ test, okay? It's called a Bailey's test. And this test is really, really hard to do. <laughs> this is what you do is you get a baby here, white paper, red piece of string, and you put it in front of the baby and you put the, you say, baby, look at this. <laughs> okay, and so then you score it, right? If the baby looks at it, uh, if the baby ignores it, it's, it's zero points. If they look at it, look away, and then don't look back, it's one point. If they look at it and stare at it, it's two points. If they reach for it and don't touch it, it's four points. And then they, and it's like, my baby, right, picks it up, puts it in their mouth, throws it on the ground. That's five points. <laughs> That's what babies are supposed to do. Right? And then you, and there's a really complicated scoring system uh, that you do. And so that's how you, so you test their IQ. And of course, it, it, it gets, now we're all, when we're using Gunjong, they're now, and now they start doing lots of verbal sort of talking. Uh, types of, of exercises, okay? Um, but, you know, we just have the, and this is what we found. We found that 21% of the babies were cognitively delayed. That means they had less than one standard deviation below average, which means that the prediction is that their IQ will be 90 or below, right? Uh, but then motor delays were 33%. And, oops, sorry, um, one or the other is 42% had one or the other. So 42% of China's baby. Remember, this is 42 of 48%, right? 500 scissor lil, the 500 scissor, or, right? 500 scissor lil, the babies. 40, I mean, this is 20% of China's babies. One in five are cognitively delayed, right? Now, Okay, so we said, okay, let's, let's gun to time. So I, I don't have the data here. So in 12 to 18 months, it was actually good news. It was really good news. Is the, the anemia rates went down to about by the sister, and then, and then the, um, uh, what you call it, the, um, if they, these are the control, in the control group, uh, and their cognitive scores stayed about the same. They went down a little bit. Okay, but, uh, I mean, they, they went up a little bit. They, they did better. But then we get out to Shibagia, Ursa City, and suddenly these babies are doing horrible. Uh, it's in our newest round, 60% are failing cognitive delays, and 50% of them are failing motor skills. They're just doing horrible right now. And the reason is it's probably not nutrition. So what we did is we gave a nutrition supplement and it increased HB and reduced anemia. I, I was talking about the control group here, but the control group and the treatment group have all these cognitive problems have just gone, they're over 50% now. And the real, re we think the reason is, is that, you know, there's three things. <laughs> Jim Heckman will tell you three things cause cognitive. Nutrition, genes, and then family environment, right? And, these kids are getting zero stimulation. Uh, their parents love them, and so they're they they hold them really. High. So that's why their their motor skills are bad because mom holds them so much. But they're loved, and you know that they. But by the, but they ignore them. They don't talk to them. They don't sing to them. They don't read to them. There's no toys. They strap to their back, and and they just keep going. And so these kids are. are we're really, I mean, it's very, very worrisome. So, uh, and of course, this has lifetime effects on IQ, mental health, height, weight, you know. Interesting. So, Bifurger Sushilarenger has cognitive problems. Bifurger Wushilaren has yin yang How many are stunted or wasted? 
How many are stunted or wasted, do you think? Just your shenti tai ching or the go golf? Only 3% are stunted and 4% are wasted. So they're getting enough calories, but they aren't getting uh, uh, they aren't getting they, they aren't getting nutrients, uh, micronutrients. Um, also, they're eating. They're, so you ask them, where do you get your information from? Two sources. So where's the two sources? Right? From school? No. What? No. Doctors don't know anything. <laughs> we give we give knowledge tests to doctors. Twin E, Wei Sheng Yuan, Yi Sheng, Shen Yuan, Yi Sheng. They they don't they don't know anything about it. zero. I mean they they they're really very their their knowledge is very low on nutrition and baby care. What? TV. A TV, kind of yeah. And that's like number three or something like that. Uh, the, the media to TV. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> right. They're poor, poor, right? Their mother-in-law. I know their their own mother. Right, the baby's grandma. That's number one. And number two, my knife under it. <laughs> the, the formula salesman, salesperson in the Xianchong, the Chao Shi. That's the number, that's the number to the formula salesman and grandma. <laughs> right. And of course, grandma knows nothing about raising a Da Xianchong, right? <laughs> grandma knows how to raise a Nomi, right? And she raised four or five farmers. Right? And they were all I but strong and we gong di. Right? Yeah, you know, a farmer, if a farmer has an IQ of 90, it's no problem, right? Because you just need to go with the right? You just gunja Right? <laughs> but but you don't, you don't, you aren't gonna be able to go do algebra or learn English or and so so grandma thinking thinks she's doing fine. Right? But of course, when you look at the so, uh, does this matter for China's future? That's what I want you to think about, right? That's inequality, remember? Any human capital inequality. How is this gonna translate into inequality, income inequality, 15 to 20 years from now, right? There are, they're the whole labor force. And we know labor force are 越来越低. I mean, 越来越少, the number of new workers.